says I'm live. This is the first time I'm live through the actual YouTube application. Um, so this is all new. I can see the chat. Let's see if I can see everything from the chat. I think so. Yes, that's awesome. If at any point during this live stream you're tuning in and you have any questions about making comics or you have any questions about drawing comics, then please leave them in the chat and at the end of this live stream I will answer them. So welcome to this live stream. Welcome to my channel. My name is Henrique. I make and teach comics. So if you are looking to make comics then you're in the right place. If you like this live stream and in the end you think, hmm, interested and I want to watch weekly videos about making comics, then be sure to subscribe. Today we're going to talk about drawing comics specifically. And because this is a live stream and the last live streams I had very uh, big issues with sharing my screen and everything, and I don't even know if I can do it in like the YouTube application. Um, I'm just going to talk uh, about the whole drawing thing, but um, it is about an epiphany that I had a few years later. Uh, like it was a, a big insight about drawing in general and drawing for comics. Um, and I don't know if you ever experienced this. Sometimes something just clicks in your head and that was a moment for me. And let me know in the comments if you ever had like an art epiphany, like an art epiphany in general. I think they're always really fun because you're like walking on the street and then suddenly you go, oh, I get it now, you know? Um, and I had a moment like that and that was, um, when I was in Amsterdam at one point and I was sitting in the metro and we drove past a shopping center and it's a very pretty shopping center. You can Google it if you want. It's called the Magna Plaza. It's like M-A-G-N-A -M Plaza. Um, and it's a very pretty building. I actually looked it up. It's like neo-Gothic and neo-Renaissance kind of like style and it's extremely elaborate on the outside. It's also elaborate on the inside. But um, the outside is like, it has so many things on it. And I was sitting in the metro and looking at it and we were kind of like waiting in front of a traffic light or something. And um, I just had a really long time to, to look out the window and stare at this building. And I was just... First of all, it's a really pretty building. So my brain goes, ooh, something pretty. And then, you know, the artists, <laughs> we start analyzing the thing. And it was also, at the same time, I was very overwhelmed by the amount of stuff on the building. And I was like, how do you even draw such a thing? Like, how do you go about it? And because we were standing there for a really long time, I actually had the chance to really study it. And later in the day, because of my epiphany in the metro, I actually looked up some photos and I studied it even more and I I really it's so dumb and you might already know this but it really struck me suddenly that yes it looked very complicated but if you really really looked at it it wasn't actually that complicated it was just a lot but the building itself and if you look it up in google you can see it especially like the front with the wall with the windows in it like there's a lot of like um stuff on the top um a lot of stuff at the top but it's like columns and then there's a lot of windows and then they all have like this decoration and design to it but in the end what i saw especially in that building was it was a lot of shapes within shapes but the shapes themselves were actually really really simple and that building is a very very good example of making something very complicated with very simple shapes but once you see it it was like just the window itself, it was like a, it was like a um, rectangle, a standing rectangle. And the rectangle had, it was divided into smaller rectangles with little hoops in them. So it was like a rectangle with a circle on top. And then it had like decoration, which was more rectangles. And inside were more rectangles and more circles and all that kind of stuff. But it, all it was, was the rectangles and, and circles and kind of like, um, curves and stuff um and it just clicked for me in that moment because I had heard it before you know like everything is made up out of shapes um but then sometimes you forget about that <laughs> and you just look at something and you look at for example you look at the outline and you start drawing the outline first and then you kind of like fill it in but at that point I was like because I had always, up until that point, been so intimidated by backgrounds and especially things with, um, 
you know, things that are very straight, uh, like buildings and furniture and, and stuff like that. Um, uh, I'm very intimidated by perspective drawing and by making things symmetrical. Like I'm very, I feel like I'm, I'm way better at drawing organic shapes, things like trees and grass and stuff like that. Um, but buildings especially really, really intimidated me. And it wasn't until I really sat down and looked at the building that I really, I, I just suddenly understood it way more. And so I spent the rest of the day drawing buildings. <laughs> I looked up a ton of reference, um, you know, saved all kinds of images on my iPad when I was at Starbucks later. Uh, and I, I had my sketchbook on me and I drew just building fronts for the rest of the day and just buildings in general. And that really, really helped me. And when it comes to drawing, because this is a video about drawing, drawing tips for your webcomic, I know that a lot of people feel very intimidated when it comes to drawing, because in comics, you have to draw everything. It's people, it's animals, creatures. I don't know what your comic is about. It is backgrounds, a lot of backgrounds. It is vehicles. It is maybe things like horses or bikes, you know? Um, and a lot of it, like, I don't know about you, but before I really started to make a very long detailed comic, um, I drew in my comfort zone a lot. So I drew characters and they were in a room. Sometimes I would draw like half of a couch, but never something super elaborate where I had to draw entire streets and stuff. Um, so that intimidated me a lot in the beginning. And actually stuff rarely intimidates me now. I had a few instances in my comic where I was like, this is so hard because it was so complicated. But again, I kept focusing on like one example was I had to draw a ship boat. I still don't kind of know what it is. It's like, I, I think it's a boat. Um, but this is how much I know about boats and ships. Um, so I looked up a ton of reference. It's actually funny because I got a comment on that page of my comic from a person who actually knows a lot of that. And he's like, oh, you drew it really well. Like usually people draw stuff in the wrong places. I was like, I really looked at my reference really well. Thank you. <laughs> um, but you know, that's what I did, like a bunch of reference. And then, okay, what is it made up of? what shapes and this is my this is my biggest tip for when you're intimidated always start with the large basic shapes and this goes for everything it goes for backgrounds it goes for drawing actions um with characters like for example if you draw a character is doing a, a very elaborate action like the first thing you would do is either just draw a line of the action itself. Like you start with kind of like the movement and then the big shapes of the character. You don't even, you know, what I did when I was very young was start with the face and then just start with the eyes and the nose, then draw a face around it, draw the hair on top of it, then draw the neck, then draw the shoulders, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, or just the like an outline of, uh, for example, a horse or something, I would just draw the outline of what I knew a horse would look like. But now it's like, draw the shapes first. So maybe you even like attach the head to the body and just draw like this big lump that is just the shape of your character. And think about it more in like the broad shapes. And then you go fill in the shapes within the shapes. And then when you do that, you can also pay way more attention to um, the scale of things. Um, like, for example, you can draw like a, a pretty long or broad face and then draw the eyes way smaller and then a bigger nose and then a really small mouth again for like that nice character variation. But if you already have the big shapes in place, then you can really play with the shapes that go inside the shape and really make it very dynamic looking and um um, and not have kind of like the eyes and the nose and the mouth all be the same size. Um, because you're not starting drawing the eye and then drawing the iris and then go to the nose and stuff. So really work big to small. That's, that's a very big tip that I got from my heart epiphany in the Metro. Um, and maybe you already knew this, but just take this as a reminder then, because it helps with breaking down every single thing. It's like the comic process itself, right? It might look very intimidating to draw a comic page. So an entire page, and then, you know, how do you go from a blank page to an entire comic page? Well, no, you do it in steps. 
and you start with the big picture first what's my layout going to be and even and that's where you really really use the shapes as well in your thumbnails that's where you start so when you start drawing you also never start from a blank page you have your thumbnail and ideally your thumbnail is a very quick sketch you don't go into too much detail so the the big shapes actually make up most of what we see on the page at first glance. And that's actually the most important thing. If you get your big shapes on your page and on your composition, if you get that right first, um, and then you put the detail on top, there's hardly anything you can do wrong. Um, you know, you can over texture things and over detail things, but it's an all, a whole other thing. But if that's solid, if your big shapes are solid and you have variety in your shapes on your page, so you don't have like your character constantly from the same distance from the camera uh, or standing in the same kind of like pose and the camera is always in the, in the same position, like you can play and have variety on the page. So the page looks nice and appealing. Um, if you do that and you have that solid, then you really cannot mess it up. <laughs> and then, you know, for the details and where goes what and what size is it on the shape and, um, you know, how far away from the edges and stuff is it like, that's what the reference is for. So that's the second biggest thing is what it was like, um, I would have never came up with a building that looks like the Magna Plaza in Amsterdam. Like I just, I cannot, I'm not an architect, you know, I cannot draw buildings. So that's what reference is for. I've made a video uh, recently about that. And then my last point about the big shapes is why it's really important. And if you're really intimidated by, for example, doing very elaborate backgrounds and you feel the need to draw everything in your comic, that's where the big shapes come in handy because I made another video and I'm going to link that in the description later as well about simplifying your page. I think the video is called Make Comics Faster or something. Um, I will link it later in the description. But um, that video actually talked about simplifying your backgrounds. For example, if either a lot of stuff is in shadow or if it's very far away from the camera, stuff tends to, when it's farther in the distance, it tends to lose detail. And that's where big shapes come into play as well. Like if you're looking at a cityscape and you need to draw an entire cityscape, the stuff in the back will not have a lot of detail. It will not have, you know, all the texture and all the, the decoration I was talking about before. If you looked at the Magna Plaza from very far away, which is hard to do in Amsterdam, but um, if you would, the thing would actually start to lose detail. And you would not see all the decorations on the pillars and you would not, you know, and all the decorations on the top would just blend into one shape. Um, and that is something that you do um, when you draw backgrounds from a far away distance. That's where you simplify and that's where you either save time or, you know, save the reader from having to look at an enormous textured panel. Um, and that's the big shapes come in handy there. So if you look at a cityscape, you will just see, you know, the outline, you'll see the big, the big buildings first, like the big apartment buildings and the big, you know, I don't know, the big churches or the mountains in the background. That's what you would see, but you wouldn't see like there's houses on that mountain, you know, if it's very far away. Um, you would maybe see the shape of a village, but that's about it. Um, so when it comes to drawing, don't, you know, Throw the detail and the stuff that's important that you want your reader to focus on, um, you know, and, and really try and simplify. I see those uh, questions coming in, in the chat because I'm kind of going to talk about this. Um, yeah, let me know if you if, like, I would really love to know, like, what are your art epiphanies? What is stuff that um, you were at one place and then you looked at something and suddenly something artsy really clicked for you. I would love to hear those stories. Um, but I see a comment from Chioma. Hi, I just recently started my webcomic and it took me a week to make the first episode. I'm not even finished a week for an entire episode. That's actually really good. <laughs> I would say that's really, really good. Um, I don't know how long your episodes are. Um, for me, one page takes me 15 to 20 hours. Um, 
So if you can find 20 hours in your week and do an entire page, that is that's an accomplishment. Well done. And I'm so happy that you started. Just keep going. That's awesome work. Always love hearing about people's experiences starting out their comics, um, especially beginning. It can be super intimidated. Um, it's like a scrolling webtoon. Yes. But still, I mean, that's a lot of drawings. <laughs> um, yeah. And then especially in the beginning, like you have to figure out so much and start drawing stuff for the first time. So many things like guys scatter your reference and then, you know, again, look at the shapes. How how is it built up? And, you know, don't make it super complicated. Like some shapes are just really weird. It's like a square with a circle somewhere inside that has like a half circle again somewhere you know those kinds of shapes um you know don't make it too complicated if you think like well it's kind of like a half circle-ish thing with a scribble then that's fine too but uh try and look at those bigger shapes um and um i forgot my train of thought there was something else i want to say about that but uh yeah that's how you i guess i wanted to say that's how you build up like the really complicated uh the complicated stuff uh, from your reference and, and things. And then, you know, don't draw, don't draw everything from your reference, like simplify your reference images and put the stuff in the right places where it matters. Um, you know, it's a lot of drawing. <laughs> hey, Megan, finally made it to one of these. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks for watching. <laughs> I have inked three whole episodes, three out of 10. Ready to publish on the 19th. That is super excited. Super exciting, I should say. That's awesome. Are you, uh, are you posting a webcomic on Webtoon somewhere or on your own site? Like, send me a link. I would love to look at it uh, when you publish or do a shout out. Choma says, I have to share a laptop with my brother. I have to have school. So what if it's a lot? Yeah. You have stuff to do. <laughs> like oftentimes a webcomic is, is our hobby, you know, we have to fit it into a free time. So, um, so yeah, good job. Just good job. Yes, Webtoon's awesome. Yeah, architecture and perspective. Yeah, true. For me too, like I love drawing, drawing organic things like humans and plants and stuff like that. And architecture is, um, it's hard. I actually got one of those architecture books. <laughs> oh, I forgot the, I forgot the author, but he talks about a perspective and it's just like a very simple level. I get it. But when you start going super complicated, like my brain's not that mathematic. It just isn't. Um, I really try, but uh, what I hear from the pros too is like a lot of them say like, I just wing it. I just, Eventually, you start knowing when it's right. You start seeing it. Um, and then, you know, you have some basic rules, but the super, super, super technical drawings, that's not, you know, it's not how they do it usually either. Um, yeah. It's a question. How do you overcome your ar architecture and perspective struggles? Yeah, it was a question for Megan, but um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, a lot of reference <laughs> looking at reference trying to understand what you're seeing trying to understand the shapes um and then um looking how it's built up usually it's like there's for example the magna plaza that i was talking about the building that i saw if you haven't watched the entire video just scroll back later um but it's a huge it's a really huge building but it's basically a square with a lot of columns and that's the basis of it it's a lot of columns, and then you have these really, like, very well-known Amsterdam, like, oh, what do you call that? It's, like, stuff they put on the top, and it's a lot of decoration. They, they really make the top of the building, like, really decorated, and then there's towers on top of it, and that's the basic of the building. But it looks incredibly complicated. If you, if you see a picture, it has banners on it, it has lights on it, it has decorations on it, and it has a lot of little windows inside of windows, and it's one of those Renaissance things. <laughs> um, you know, and, and uh, it looks really complicated, but in the end, it's just a square 
with a few like half rounded columns and then some towers on top. So if you start out with that, it's very, it's way more easier to draw a cube in perspective um, and to draw some cylinders on top of a cube in perspective. So if you really want to get the perspective right, um, lay in like the, the basic horizon line first and then draw those basic shapes in perspective and then just have fun and draw all the stuff on top of it. That's what I would say. It's like how if I, if you go to my comic, the very first panel is a city on top of a hill. And I was incredibly intimidated by that panel. It took me days to do. It literally took me days. Um, but what I did is I laid in an horizon line. I laid in the shape of, um, of, of the hill. And then I basically used the perspective tools in Photoshop. And I just, you can set it to where, um, or no, I did it in Procreate, I think. I cannot remember, it's a long time ago, but especially Procreate has really, really good perspective drawing things. But you can also use something like Lazy Nesame, which is an add-on for Photoshop, which has also really great perspective tools. Um, if you draw traditionally, then forget about all of this. Um, but then I, draw, I drew the horizon line, I drew the hill, and then I drew boxes on top of the hill, just boxes, 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 boxes everywhere. And I just did this with like locking the perspective so you can only draw straight lines or horizontal lines, like vertical or horizontal lines, and it will all snap to your perspective, to your uh, vanishing points. So I just drew, I just did a texture, basically, like box textures everywhere. And then I was like, okay, I now have a giant box fest on this hill. Now I can draw houses. You know, now I can make houses out of them. And then I, I lumped kind of like the boxes together and made kind of like a bigger apartment building and stuff. And that is how I drew, um, that's how I drew the first panel of my first page. It was a very intimidated panel to start on. I don't recommend if you're not, you know, to, uh, um, it can really get you stuck immediately if you don't get through that. But, um, you know, Again, start with the basics. That's what I wanted to say. Like it's like the comic process. You don't immediately draw a comic page. You first do thumbnails, then you draw, and then you draw it again, and then you ink on top of it. And it's the same. It's the same with drawing. Drawing goes in stages. Um, you draw the basic shapes first, then you figure out how it's structured and stuff. And then you start drawing the detail on top of it. I've seen some drawing how-to books from pros that say like they have like four drawing stages. When they do a character, they will start with like the action line and have some basic like, and here go the arms and the legs. And then they will draw the basic shape of the character and really focus on the character design. So that's like big torso, head, and then only some shapes for the arms and legs. Then they go in and draw the volumes, like make it super, uh, make it really 3D looking. And then they will go in and draw like the face even that's last for them like face and the hair and stuff and then the last final detail really finalizing it and doing the final line art um so with everything with drawing like it's all stages and it counts for perspective as well um start with a horizon line uh what i usually do is like draw an indication of how I want the scene to look, like not think about perspective at all, and then kind of see where the horizon line is falling, um, then draw the horizon line, and then try to um, really um, uh, make the shapes follow vanishing points, and then see where I drew the shapes, and then where would the vanishing point be for that, and then draw the more final stuff on top of that sketch. Megan is recommending a book, How to Draw, Drawing, and Sketching Objects and Environments from Your Imagination by Scott Robertson. That's awesome. I never, I never heard of this book before. Awesome. I can always use more, <laughs> uh, more stuff about environment design. Um, that's awesome. Ask, could I send you my first episode? I'm super proud of it. Yeah, if you can just link to it, uh, send it on my Twitter or, um, you know, put it in the YouTube comments here so other people can look at it as well. Feel free to do that. 
Like, I normally don't, like, <laughs> this is not a place to promote your comic and stuff. But if you're in my chat, definitely 100% just throw the episode here. I give you my permission to promote yourself under my stuff. <laughs> but also, you can just send it to my Twitter or send it in a DM. I'm fine with that, too. Megan asks, what would you say is the average amount of time you spend on a page, including roughing, inking, coloring, and text? Uh, it's around 15 to 20 hours. Uh, depends on the complexity of the page. I've definitely had pages where I was definitely putting in 20 hours. Um, I had pages that were less. It really depends, and I'm still working on getting faster. Um, this is because my comic is slightly more elaborate. Uh, I draw out more things, have some more texture somewhere in like stuff like the hair. But as I um, I mentioned that one video of making comics faster, this is something that I definitely want to improve in because at first I used to render, for example, my shadows and my lighting. Like I used to render everything and really think of like, there's light going here. So the shadows must be here. And then I had all kinds of like shadow shapes everywhere and that took forever. And now I go more into what's the shadow shapes First of all, that makes stuff very, very easy to read. Like as a, from a reader perspective, like it makes it visibly uh, better to look at, um, but also it's way faster to do shadows that way. Um, the thing that trips me up, and I'm not sure if this is an issue for more people, but maybe you're somebody who needs to hear this too, is um, forget about realism because one of the reasons that I usually take a lot of time is because my brain says, well, the light's coming from this place. So now, you know, the shadows need to be here, 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 and here, and here. Well, art wise, maybe it looks better to have a little less shadow or, you know, don't, I, I'm not saying make stuff super unrealistic, but also don't let yourself get stuck because, um, because of realism or because, because it has to be right. That's the thing that I struggled with a lot at the beginning. Like it has to be correct. And like, no, this is art. Who says it needs to be correct? It needs to be pretty and well um, communicated. You know, that's the function That's the function of art. If you want realism, take a photo. <laughs> um, you know, uh, it's the same with like the other day, uh, I'm, I'm still working on my course. Um, and I was looking at uh, I was looking at all kinds of comics for that, and I looked at the Wormworld Saga. And the thing is, Daniel Lisko, who makes that, he makes amazing, very painterly artwork. It's an amazingly elaborate comic. I don't know how he does it. Like, ask him how long it takes for one episode. I don't know. It's like a year or something. Whoop! My sound thingy is falling. Okay, this is not working anymore. I hope you can still hear me right. Um, but he, I was looking at his comic and, you know, he, he also has to simplify a lot because otherwise he's just going to paint a super hyper-realistic comic. But one thing that he does not skimp on is lighting. And that is something that he is incredibly good at. So he's really focused in his, um, in his pages on design, composition and design, color and lighting. But he's not... I don't think he's going like, well, the light's coming from this. So now I have these kinds of shadows that I need to put in everywhere. And then, you know, all of the anatomy has to be correct and la la la. He's not doing that. He's focused on giving you an emotion and giving you an experience. So what he focuses on is top notch lighting. That's just really like impactful and maybe not always realistic, but it's pretty realistic looking because he's really good at it. But he is not aimed at making something correct or making something, you know, very technical and elaborate, but he is focused on giving you an emotion and focused on making something really, really pretty and atmospheric. It's all so atmospheric. Like he's really, really good at color and light. Um, so yeah, definitely uh, focus on what you want to convey, what you want to communicate uh, instead of, you know, getting stuck in all of that. Uh, all of that detail that doesn't really matter for the story and for the storytelling. The realism always trips me up. Yeah. Especially when I'm trying to make more expressive character designs. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's character characters and faces is one of those things too. Yeah, you can really... Like trying to make... It's a tough balance between trying to make something 
still look correct where it doesn't look broken, but also don't let the realism like hold you back in, in the amount of expressiveness that you want to convey. Like not to say that realistic faces cannot be super expressive, but um, yeah, really one really pushing the shapes, like knowing where the shapes need to go and then being able to push them. That's like a skill. That's a skill. Yeah, definitely comes with time and practice doing it a lot. Yeah, and you will just eventually you get a feel for, you know, when it is um, just good, good in terms of shapes and in terms of like basic anatomy, um, you know, drawing an anatomy book, but uh, like the basics, uh, the basics. And I actually got a I got feedback from Jason Brubaker once I was at uh, CTNX. Uh, a while back and he was there and he actually gave me that feedback of like, yeah, drawings are good, but I can see that underneath you're still struggling with structure. And what he meant by that is like, really know where the eyes sit in the, in the skull and then be aware that your eyes are actually sitting inside your head, okay, that kind of stuff. Um, and then they're at the same, you know, height. So, so you don't suddenly have an eye that's like floating here, you know, and then the mouth, like it, that's the kind of structure you can push shapes, of course, but even especially if you have really exaggerated um, character designs and uh, things like um, uh, things are like caricatures, for example, they will still follow the rules, but they will just stretch it. Like if the eyes are very high up, they will still have a skull on top of it, it's just all very stretched, but there's still a skull, there's still cheekbones, it's just stretched, but it still follows the structure of the face, of how a face is structured, it's just very exaggerated. Um, but that's all that's, yeah, uh, being aware of what you're drawing. Like, for example, being aware that the eyes are round, they are a sphere, um, and that's, and there is a little circle on top of that sphere. So if the sphere turns, the circle will, be affected like that kind of that kind of small little stuff um yeah that all, com that all comes with uh, a lot of study and keeping aware and not not going to automated things in your head of like a face is a circle the eyes sit in the middle with a circle you forget what you're doing at that point because you're just drawing that what's sometimes called a symbol you have a symbol in your head of like a face is a round thing with two round things and a more rectangle thing here. And then you're not thinking about what you're really drawing. Like I'm drawing eyes. I sit inside the head. Uh, I'm drawing a mouth. A mouth goes, you know, you can see inside <laughs> a little bit. And there's teeth that are part of the skull, you know. Um, that's all stuff. So much stuff to think about when drawing. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. We went on a a whole like drawing drawing thing here i love it thanks thanks all so much for um sending your questions in the chat um yeah if there is not any more other questions i'm just gonna wait for a little bit uh see if there's anything more coming in um yeah i want to thank you for watching if you want more stuff about comics um, I have a checklist, actually, for people who want to start a comic, but they don't really know which steps to take in order to be able to start. Like, what do you need to start a comic and how do you set it all up? I have a checklist for you. It's the ultimate checklist to start your comic. Um, it's free for if you subscribe to my email list, you will also get a weekly email that will guide you through the checklist and give you some extra info about making comics. Um, you know, and keep you motivated. <laughs> it's nice to get a, a weekly reminder of like, oh yeah, I need to work on my comic. Uh, so if you want that, go to pencilsandstories.com slash extra. The link is in the description below. And you can also sign up for uh, my notification list for my new course that I mentioned before. I'm working on a course. I'm going to launch it in January on Kickstarter. And it will be a very special early bird launch. Um, you know, like a pilot. Um for people also who want to start a comic, it's called How to Start a Comic. It will take you through the entire preparation process. We start out with how to come up with ideas, how to expand on your ideas, how to use your ideas for your story, and then how to develop your story, write your entire outline, design your main characters, 
get organized and prepare for your pages. And then I have like a, a module that's like a crash course on how to make a comic page. Um, so it's a, it's like everything that I could think of, of like everything you need to start your own comic. And it's very perfect for, especially for longer comics. I think it works for short comics as well. But, so it works for uh, like everything. So if you want to make, if you wanted to make your own comic for a while, but you never start, then this course could be the exact framework for you to follow. Um, I take all the guesswork out of it for you. And uh, the course launches on Kickstarter. Um, you can get it afterwards because the Kickstarter is meant to, uh, for me to be able to launch it. Um, but of course it will have a special early bird price for the people who get it on Kickstarter. So it will never, it will never be cheaper than on the Kickstarter. So I definitely recommend getting notified uh, when the course launches. If you want that, you can go to howtostartacomic.com. The link's also in the description below and be notified. <laughs> so don't miss out on the Kickstarter. It will have fun other extras as well that you can get with it um, and some fun educational stuff. So definitely recommend that. I don't see any more questions coming in, uh, but I want to thank you all so much for watching and have a great day. Leave any questions that you want in the comments below um, and I'll see you next week. Have a great day, guys.